Hello friends, my name is Dan, and in this video I'm going to cover why I believe, and I'm also going to show the evidence that I have, that the Office of the Police Complaint Commissioner does not have the authority to act in the province of British Columbia. You may remember in April 2016, I showed up at their office to perform a public trust audit on behalf of the people of British Columbia. Specifically, what I was asking for to see the documentation that um, they've sworn oaths as per the Police Act, specifically Section 51.01, Subsection 1, Article A. Not only was their office not accessible to the public, they refused to show me the documentation. And it's my belief that they refused to show me the documentation because they don't have it. It just doesn't exist. So what that boils down to, if they don't have it and it doesn't exist, is they're operating outside the Police Act. And by operating outside the Police Act, they're actually committing fraud against the public trust. Now you may remember a previous video I did titled, Who are the Office of the Police Complaints Commissioner in British Columbia? If you haven't seen it, check it out real quick. That'll make you understand this video a lot easier. As per their website, the Office of the Police Complaint Commissioner is fair, independent, principled, and, quote, the Office of the Police Complaint Commissioner provides impartial civilian oversight of complaints involving municipal police in the province of British Columbia. We ensure thorough and competent investigations of police complaints and fair adjudication with respect to all parties, unquote. So, specifically, what is this oath that I'm talking about? Well, in the Police Act, section 49.1 is called Oath of Office, and it says this. Before beginning to exercise powers and perform duties under this act, the Police Complaint Commissioner and any acting Police Complaint Commissioner must take an oath before the Clerk of the Legislative Assembly to faithfully and impartially exercise those powers and perform those duties. So section 49.1 just applies to Stan Lowe, the Police Complaint Commissioner. And if you go down slightly below that to section 51, it's called Staff and Other Designated Individuals. And subsection 1 says this, The Police Complaint Commissioner may appoint one or more Deputy Police Complaint Commissioners and other employees necessary for exercising the powers and performing the duties of the Police Complaint Commissioner under this Act. And now I'm going to get into the oath of those other employees appointed under this Act. It's actually in Section 51.01. It's called Confidentiality. Now here's where we cut to the chase. Section 51.01, subsection 1, states this. Before beginning to exercise powers and perform duties under this act, a deputy police complaint commissioner and an employee appointed under section 51, subsection 1, which I just read, must take an oath before the police complaint commissioner to faithfully and impartially exercise the powers and perform the duties delegated by the police complaint commissioner to the Deputy Police Complaint Commissioner, or the other employee. Now here's where I take issue with their oath. The main thing is, is I have reason to believe, as well as evidence, that they are not acting impartially. Quite the opposite, in fact. <laughs> and this creates a, a bias, uh, a conflict of interest, and it shows in their work and it's blatantly obvious when you actually deal with them that they're not there to be independent or impartial or even acting as civilian oversight. Now if the Deputy Police Complaint Commissioner and the other employees appointed under the Act don't have this oath, they haven't taken it then there's no obligation to act impartial whatsoever. Why should they? It's not like they've sworn an oath to it or anything. <laughs> and that's where we come down to the real heart of this video. Now, I made a complaint 
against a municipal police officer in February 2016, which was actually a big mistake, but I'll get into that later. And in speaking to the Office of the Police Complaint Commissioner regarding the complaint, uh, I did a little digging and I found a lot of dirt. So one of those other employees appointed under the Act is a guy named Brian Thiessen. Mr. Thiessen's job is to analyze complaints and come to a determination whether or not the complaint is going to be admissible or inadmissible. And in speaking with Mr. Thiessen in February 2016 about the, that current complaint, I wanted to ask him a few questions. Fortunately, I recorded the entire phone call. When I called Mr. Thiessen, it was pretty early in the morning, so I sound a little groggy and I probably felt a little groggy. Uh, also, my cat's trying to get my attention, so you'll hear my, a cat meowing in there somewhere. Now, I'm not going to play the whole phone call in this video. Um, it's relatively long, and there's also matters that are still before the courts, so I don't want to make this all public right now. Um, I certainly will in the future, but you're just going to hear two clips of some of the questions that I'm asking him. What you're about to hear is evidence that the Office of the Police Complaint Commissioner does not have the authority to act in the province of British Columbia. Here it is. Hello, Brian Thiessen. Brian. Hi, it's Dan Balling. Oh, hi. How are you? I'm all right. This okay. is a, this is okay. this is. I wanted to talk to you about your complaint that you had with our office. This is uh, Brian Thiessen. Yes. Is that Thiessen spelled T H I E S S E N? Yeah. Oh, okay. Are you the you're the same Brian Thiessen that um, discontinued my complaint against police that threatened to break down my door? Yeah, I think the one of the first ones or something you complaint that you had and I think after you were dealing with uh, Craig Sampson I think after that if I remember I see. yeah okay so it seems fairly straightforward your complaint to get more particulars from you on that sure I just had a couple of questions for you sure do you have a uh, employment history with law enforcement at all uh, do I yes oh okay um, any chance you could uh, describe for me the definition of the word impartial? Um, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. Oh. Okay. All I know is that, you know, as far as uh, what I think you're getting at, all I know I've been assigned to your file, so that's what I'm doing right now is that. Yeah, I actually find it very disturbing that uh, you would uh, be investigating this, considering what happened the last time you took on a complaint of mine. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you could certainly request somebody else, to another miscibility person, to look at it. Yeah, I think I that's no problem with that at all. Yeah, I think that's probably for the best, um, okay. because I have no problem. I can talk to my supervisor who assigned me this and let him know that uh, you want somebody else. Yeah, because the thing is, is. Um, I had uh, made a complaint about the police threatening to break down my door, mm -hmm. um, telling me to shut up, and then they refused to ID themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's the thing, Brian. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, my cat's trying to get my attention here. Okay, so I'm going to stop it right there. And you've just heard Brian Thiessen admit that he doesn't know the definition of the word impartial. Now, if you think that's good, wait till you hear clip number two. You won't believe this. Here it is. Yep, that would have been a decision made by the commissioner, not by me. Yeah. Right. So the commissioner took a, uh, uh, was sworn to an oath, correct? Hello? Hello? The commissioner was sworn to to an oath, correct? Um, I don't know actually. You don't know. Have you read the Have you read the Police Act? Yeah, but I don't read memorize the whole thing. I assume he took some kind of oath. I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. I I wasn't there. I don't know. So 
so I don't really know okay. and, if he did or not. And is it safe to say that you you personally have not taken an oath? Uh, no, I haven't taken an oath. Okay, good to know. Yeah, because here's the thing, Brian. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that should sum up the accountability in the province of British Columbia right there. <laughs> uh, he doesn't know if the police complaint commissioner, Stan Lowe, has taken an oath. He has no idea. Uh, he hasn't taken an oath at all. And he doesn't even know the definition of the meaning of the word impartial or impartiality. He doesn't know. He'd have to look it up. So what's his job? Well, it's quite simple. According to the Police Act, his job is to faithfully and impartially exercise the powers and perform the duties delegated by the Police Complaint Commissioner. That's his job, to act impartially. But he doesn't even know the definition of the word impartial. How can that be your job to impartially exercise powers and perform duties if you don't even know the definition of the word impartial? And if you haven't been sworn to this oath before beginning to exercise powers and perform duties under this act, well, unfortunately, you're operating outside the police act. It's simple as that. And if you're operating outside the police act, which you're bound to, then you're committing fraud against the public trust. And it's in this video, on the date published, that I hereby declare and announce to all the persons in the province of British Columbia that the Office of the Police Complaint Commissioner does not have the authority to act in the province of British Columbia. So if you made a, a complaint about the police in the past, and your complaint was taken and handled with an extreme bias, now you know why. It's because they committed fraud against the public trust. Because let's face it, if Brian Thiessen doesn't know the definition of the word impartial, and he hasn't sworn the oath to act impartial, well, what about the other employees? Do they know the definition of the word impartial? Maybe, maybe not. Have they been sworn to this oath under section 51.01, subsection 1, article A, under the Police Act? <laughs> Not likely. Not likely at all. Because if you think about it, if they were, if they had this oath, if, if they had documentation of it, they would probably provide it when some buffoon who could barely put together a grade 12 education walks through the door and asks to see it. Because, he says... He's got reason to believe and evidence that they've committed fraud against the public trust. I don't know about you, but if I was in such a high-powered position of public trust, I would probably smack that oath down on the counter so the idiot asking for it could see it right away, and I could send him out of there with his tail between his legs. But if you've seen the video for the public trust audit, you know that's not what happened. Now, I did contact a few news agencies to see if they were interested in this story. Uh, namely, Czech News, uh, Global News, uh, CTV, uh, CFAX, and CBC Victoria. Only heard back from CBC. They seemed interested. But when I responded to their uh, response, never heard back from them. So if the matters of this video that you've just watched disturb you in any way, I would suggest you call Czech News in Victoria, CTV Vancouver Island, CFAX, and CBC Victoria, as well as Global News BC, and tell them that this isn't acceptable. This is fraud against the public trust. And this was already brought before them, and they did nothing about it. They, they just ignored it. Does this matter to you? Should this be on the news? Should the media be covering this? Should this story get out there beyond my little YouTube channel, which might get 200 views? The power to make it happen is all in your hands. I've certainly tried. Well, that's it for this video. I'm gonna wrap this up here. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, if you have a complaint against a municipal police officer in the province of British Columbia, this is what you're up against. And this is not accountability. Thank you.